Hello, everybody, and welcome to Freaky Tie Friday 2022-2023. I'm your host, Mr. Albin Rose. This first tie, well, I feel like I should explain. I wanted to start off with uh, a standard Freaky Tie, if that makes any sense. The first Friday of the school year is also the day of the Raven Rally. So I wanted to wear a tie that was, you know, sort of, you know, attention-getting, but that wasn't so bizarre and 1970s-ish that it would make people say, dear lord, what happened to him? So I went with the Looney Tunes, a collection of characters that most people have seen in like Space Jam movies and whatnot, and it did the job. And then with that out of the way, we get into the real deal. This tie, I can't even explain who, who would think of combining these sort of, what is that, an olive green with a bright, snazzy blue, all horizontal stripey and a crazy wide. I don't know where that's coming from. This third tie is kind of interesting. This is probably more from the 80s. We've got the bright lurid colors that um, were so very popular in that decade and this weird black and white thing going on behind it. I'm not sure what the story is there. Aha, uh -huh. the following tie. This one, at a distance, it looks like a standard blue tie, no big deal. But then if you get up close, all these little images, they're not, they're not your standard sort of paisleys that you might see in a tie. And I've got a lot of those paisley ties, that's for sure. But these are like images from, I don't know, like Aboriginal uh, stone carvings or something. I swear there's a boomerang in there somewhere. So I'm not sure what the story is with this thing, but nevertheless, there it is. And then, aha, orange. This is our first really autumnal tie. You can see that the October 6th concert was just the day before. It's right on the board there. And this orange stripey tie, I got to confess, if you tip it sideways, it sort of visually reminds me a lot of some of the, the swirls and rings on the surface of uh, Jupiter, you know, with all their crazy sandstorms and whatnot. Following that, we have, oh, yes, this thing right here. Um... It looks, you know, not too out of the ordinary until you zoom in and realize that all these little images all over this tie are various different bottles of either perfume or cologne, some sort of collection of French eau de toilette, as they say, um, which definitely qualifies as a freaky tie. Okay, full disclosure, uh, this purple one here, this was not Friday at all. It's just that this is the perfect tie for this season, and it went so very well with that shirt, I had to show it off. But of course, the Friday afterwards is Spooky Tie Friday, and for this, of course, we break out one of these skull ties that I have, and I could not help myself, and I felt compelled to wear my Jack Skellington pinstriped shirt. I think it was a good combination. Now, the day after Halloween itself, the day after the 31st, is Dia de Muertos, and that wasn't a Friday, but I felt compelled to wear this tie anyhow, because let's face it, this is an awesome tie. The following week, we have this monstrosity, and it doesn't look necessarily that surreal, per se, at a distance. You know, you got this crisscrossy thing with these big circular spots in the middle of the crisscrosses, but then you look closer, and there's some odd stuff going on here. It's so wide, you have no choice to focus on the stuff in between. And you zoom in, we've got this, like, what, blue and white interlocking sort of, I don't know what that is, and then those, those blue uh, sort of bursts, and then trapped inside of it all, it's this sort of 8-bit, like, early 80s video version of a kitty cat. Why? Who puts a little, you know, geometric cat in the middle of a brown background tie? I don't understand. Oh, moving on. Oh, this is more normal. It's like maybe a watercolor sort of uh, painting of a bunch of flowers, maybe. It's, <laughs> it's not aggressively weird, but it's definitely not a normal tie. So there you have it. Aha! This one, the solid pink one. Um, if memory serves, this was a day when all the staff was asked to wear pink in support of breast cancer awareness, which makes perfect sense. Um, now, not being a t-shirt kind of guy, although people had pink t-shirts for sale, I decided I would be wearing a hot pink tie, which I bought for this very sort of thing. So often I'm asked to wear pink and I'm like, I'm not really a t-shirt guy, but I'll definitely be rocking the hot pink somehow. Ah, functional freaky tie Friday. So this tie, it looks like it was sort of like a, I don't know, a batik or a watercolor paint or something like that. 
um, interesting critters all over it for some strange reason. Um, but the reason it's labeled as a functional freaky tie is because this is actually taken on Wednesday, the half day, before going out uh, of school for a day and a half for Thanksgiving. Functionally, it was the same as a Friday, and so I decided to break out the tie anyhow. Which brings us to this one. So you've got this oddly geometric sort of thing going on. Big checks and boxes and still stripes. And the thing is so painfully wide. Lord knows who would ever wear this in the first place. But the 70s were quite the decade. The big garish pattern of, you know, early psychedelia plus the standard buckle down sort of, you know, geometric aspect of it. But man, oh, it's just hard to get over. It's a strange tie. And on this day, of all things, uh, one of the students over in Mr. Dave Jensen's band room uh, asked to take my photo, and he put it through a uh, de-aging filter. And so you get this image of, theoretically, the young Mr. Rose. But I gotta confess, I never had a haircut like this. Honestly, this makes me look a bit too much like, I don't know, Leo DiCaprio or somebody. And then moving on to, ah, December. This it's not necessarily freaky, but it's so right for the season. This is one of my music ties, one of my Christmassy, music-y sort of ties. You zoom in, you get the holly and the mistletoe, and you have violins and trumpets and French horns and a lute even. So I think that's a pretty good tie for this time of year. Speaking of this time of year, this is a photo of a tie that I saw at Jingle Bell Jazz. Not one of mine, though I will confess, I covet this tie. Oh, it's nice. I mean... How could you not want one of these? But moving on. This tie, oh my goodness, this is a very strange tie. So first we zoom out, there's Mr. Rose playing, I believe this was a rendition of Happy Birthday for somebody. But it is getting in the way of this tie. So check this thing out. It is actually more of a choir tie, which makes sense, as I did inherit the, the vast bulk of my collection from a retired choir teacher. What you have here, if we take a moment we can see from bottom to top we've got this uh, cardinal leading the choir on and then we have a trio of mice followed by a duo of rabbits a couple of squirrels one raccoon giving it his all and at the very top we have this bell which is kind of nice though i gotta confess there's something about this raccoon's face that sort of terrifies me help he's almost screaming maybe he doesn't want to be in this choir after all Anyhow, moving on. Here we have old St. Nick climbing up a rope ladder to his balloon. This is quite the tie. In fact, I'm... No, no, this is not the one. I have one of my uh, winter holiday ties actually has a little battery in it that probably died about 18 years ago. Um, I don't think this is the tie with the battery in it. All I know is that this is also the season when I decided to see how many ties, how many... Uh, Christmassy ties I could break out all in one fell swoop. So ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you the 12 ties of Christmas. I managed to get, uh, yep, 12 days, which is to say two weeks plus a couple of days right before it in a row of me wearing various holiday themed ties. Pretty impressive, I dare say. I could probably do this again next year, but I just really felt it was necessary to give it a shot this year. All right. And this brings us to the new year. This tie, this tie, one of my students said, is kind of like a tie within a tie. You've got this grayish thing in the center, and then you've got this gold one behind it. And I can see where they're coming from, except that if you zoom in, it's almost like the gold one is a really ornate frame for the silvery one in the middle. Not only that, but this silvery one in the middle... I don't know how they do this with the with the with the with the fibers, but it's almost 3D. Check this out. Is it coming through? Yeah. Alrighty then. My bad. Thank you. <laughs> Next up we have yet another tie featuring the characters from Looney Tunes, which is kind of astounding. I did not realize until making this video, as a matter of fact, that I have two ties with all the various Bugs Bunny, Roadrunner, Yosemite Sam, the gang. And just as a refresher, here's the tie from the beginning of the school year. Not the same tie, but awfully similar. And so we move on. 
This tie, not necessarily totally freaky. In fact, it's sort of your quintessential music teacher tie, and I felt it was the appropriate thing to wear. It was still a Freaky Tie Friday, still qualifies, but this is also the Friday that we were hosting solo and ensemble at Royal Oak High School. And so I figured that I had to look like I was a professional here in this building and that I knew what I was doing, but I also wanted to wear a Freaky Tie. This thing sort of like straddled the border pretty darn well, I think. The week after we have this crazy thing. It's thick, it's wide, it's polyester, it's a lot of brown with a little bit of blue in the middle of it. Definitely early to mid 1970s. What a crazy looking thing. But what makes this tie extra special is that the polyester is so thick and stiff that the dang thing stays upright by itself if you hold it to the side. There's no sheet of cardboard tucked in this thing. That's just how it is. And to really bring the point home, here it is. I got all the way home and it's still just vertical, sticking in the air. If you hold it in the air, it just stays right there. And if you're not freaked out, you should be. And here we go. So this was right before we all departed for Chicago. I am wearing red, white, and black because of an event at Royal Oak Middle School. And their colors are, as you know, red, white, and black. And here's a little video explaining my particular take on the whole situation. Hello, everybody. So here's the scoop. It's Spirit Week here at Royal Oak Middle School, and today is the day that every grade wears their own color. As I teach all sorts of grades, I told them that I'd wear a little bit of each color for each of the three of them, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Uh, on the downside, because this is ROMS, the colors are red, white, and black, and as a consequence, you may pull out now, as a consequence, I look like I'm trying out for a White Stripes video. I'm going to Wichita, leave behind this opera forevermore. The following week, I got a gift in the mail, a very, very late breaking gift in the mail from a distant cousin of mine. <sighs> oh, it's a crazy looking tie. This is actually not completely out of nowhere. This is the album cover for uh, an album called In the Court of the Crimson King. It came out in 1968, if I'm not mistaken, possibly 69, by a group called King Crimson. Um, first wore this tie after a very odd week. There were a couple of days of uh, midwinter holiday break. We had a couple of snow days and ice days. And then on Friday, I got the message that the heater at ROMS had broken and that they were canceling school there. So my entire work week was two hours at the high school. That's an odd week. So I decided to wear the tie a second Friday in a row just because barely anybody saw the dang thing. So here I am standing next to one of my students who by pure coincidence wore a shirt, a tie-dyed Adidas sweater that was pretty much the same color. You can't see in this photo, but I will change it to this photo and you can really see that's what it was more like in person. The same sort of weird shades of pink and blue as the album cover itself. Now, February leads into March. In March, of course, you know what that means. Sharn at St. Patrick's Day. And I've got myself a St. Patrick's Day tie. But not only that, this was the day the eighth graders came to the high school to rehearse with the concert orchestra, and who should appear but the father of one of my eighth graders who goes all out for St. Patrick's Day. I had to get a photo next to this guy. I mean, how could you not? And the following week we have this. This yellow tie I've seen a couple of times before in various combinations of Freaky Tie Friday photos. I think my wife referred to this as butter stick dreams, if I'm not mistaken. And it's got a cool pattern to it. That crazy yellow shade there. Next we have this, a collection of pineapples on a blue background, which is just odd, but that's what Free Tie Friday is all about. This may have been getting close to the first week of spring. Maybe that's why I'm wearing pineapples. Ah, and then this one. This tie amuses me. Sometimes my ties get names like butter stick dreams back there. Um, and then I gotta say though, the one of my middle schoolers, there you go. And so this tie, ladies and gentlemen, is called Felipe. Next up, there's no real connection here. This may have been the last week I saw my seniors. So maybe graduation and going out into the real world was on my mind. All I know is that it was time to wear the Ben Franklin, got my mind on my money and my money on my mind tie. 
Y. There it is. And here we have May the 4th. Yes, yes, that's right. May the 4th be with you. Ha, ha, ha. And here's my Star Wars tie. Following that, we have another day. This, oh, this tie was named in a previous year. I don't remember what it is, though. Something about popcorn, I think. I'm not sure. Anyhow, flowers, you know, kablam, kablam, flowers everywhere. It makes sense in the spring to wear a tie like this. This stripey thing reminded some of my students of condiments on a hot dog. And that's a unique sort of hot dogish shade of brown there in that tie. But I had to stand in front of this 3D painting that one of my seniors made and inadvertently left in my room for a stretch. And I just thought that the, um, it just seemed to fit. It was a, it was a good location to get a photo taken in front of that thing. And this brings us to the week of Elvis, Mr. Elvis Presley. And this tie is, of course, a visual reference to his famous song, Blue Suede Shoes. There he is boogieing down. We approach the end. This is only a couple of weeks ago, and this is a crazy tie, this wide, weird sort of horizontal paisley stripey thing going across what is not quite a plain red background. Because if you zoom in, that red background has inexplicably a bunch of little blops all over it, little black dots of some sort. Couldn't tell you what they are or why, but there they are. That's a cool paisley pattern, but man, what's with the rest of it? Anyhow, and then ladies and gentlemen, yes, the time has come. The last Freaky Tie Friday of 2022, 2023. I wanted to end with a bang. So this bright, visually arresting, multi-hued, glorious piece of work is our way of wrapping up the year. And there you have it. Every single Freaky Tie Friday from 2022, 2023. This has been your host, Elbin Rose. Hopefully you've got all your assignments in. Thank you much, and I'll see you next year.